Okay, so welcome guys and today's video we are going to be doing some advanced realism black and grey. I've got this picture of a snake that we're going to be doing and I'm going to run through start to finish on how I go about it, the techniques and some quite more advanced techniques. I've got my grey washes out that you've seen in previous videos um, black, the more deep black which is world famous and the dynamic grey wash uh, from extra dark, dark, medium, light to extra light. We've just got Vaseline, a 5 tight round liner, 14 round shader, 9 mag and 15 mag and they're all killer ink needles and I'm using an injector machine still uh, the Nano which I always use I really like the way they run and yeah let's get going with it Right, so, to start with, we're going to be using the liner and I'm going to mark in some of the key points that I need um, for the design to stay with the stencil and I'm using a pound of flesh, which I've never used before, but this is probably the most expensive um, types of fake skin there is out there at the moment and it's meant to be the best the previous ones that I used the kind of they were really dull they were hard to get the stencil on this as you can see the stencil went on a lot better it's still not great and I don't think you can get great stencils on them I mean if you know any good tips on it please comment below um, but yeah I'm happy-ish with the stencil. For the references, I've printed out um, a few different um, darknesses. So I've got a really, really light one, which I can see exactly where the blacks are on the really light one, which helps. And that is how I go about things at the start. I'll, I want to put the black in solidly where it is black. Whereas on the more darker ones, the dark greys and blacks, it's quite hard to tell. Whereas it's really clear on the light picture. Um, and then I've also printed out a colour version of the picture. And on this I can see a lot more clear where the patterns are um, and everything like that. So if I'm looking at it on the stencil and the picture and the pattern's confusing or it just really helps define the different shapes and it's more easy to look at.
Now as you can see, I'm not putting in really solid lines, I'm almost skimming them in. Um, and me just scratching the surface there, it marks it in. And I don't really want a solid line in a lot of places. Uh, I want it to be more, some bits might fade out, some bits are a lot lighter. So I'm almost just skimming in the areas and getting like a permanent stencil there where the black is.
So as you can see, with a lot of this I am literally just skimming the top. Um, and where where some bits are and it's black, I will go quite heavy. Bits like down here where it is solid black. But these parts where it is a, a bit more shade and then can turn into a blur, I'm literally just marking in the sections. Don't worry about it being so neat. If you fully concentrate on trying to get into every single edge at this stage, the more the stencil will start to come off. So the main thing I'm concentrating on is just getting it all marked in and then I can come back and refine and refine to a point where I'm happy. So now we have the lines and, well, mostly parts that we've tempted in done. We're going to move on with the round shader. And I'm just going to start putting in some of the black areas um, and some of the bits that I want more blurry. So these two parts here on the snake. I want them to be really forward and crisp and really refined whereas these parts that are more blurry in the snake I don't want to be lining them in with a liner and have them too sharp so with the round shader I can just get that blurriness and that effect that gives it a little bit more distance I'm going to start colouring in these sections of black and then Go from there with shading more parts to make it blurry. So I'm using, at the moment, I'm going off the really light picture of the snake, which I've got really close next to me, and then I can see it well. Um, and this helps me, especially with these sections where it is quite dark, it it helps me see where the black sections are in it more clear so I can put them in and really just work at it piece by piece at a time just like a jigsaw puzzle is just putting in each section at a time uh, getting the blacks nice and solid and then they don't fade if this was a real person and this was on real like on a body you wouldn't want to be mixing through the shades because um, then you're just dulling the black or darkening the grey so it's just making sure that you put each bit in at a time and have it nice solidly that colour or that shade so small little circles here getting it nice and solid and if you can hear that it's not about having the needle in all the time you know, or you'll, or you'll overwork the skin. So it's just getting it almost little flicks and getting it nice and solid. I mean, sometimes I'll go the same direction and sometimes I will cross hatch it. 
I think it's more of just what you get used to and how you prefer to do the colouring. I just really think about the skin and not over hitting the same area. And where I can see the black where it's not coming right up to an edge, I'm literally just flicking it out. I'm doing the motion that I see it being in my head with the needle. And then if you just dab it, it'll help you on the stencil as well. At the moment, the more I wipe it, the more the rest of the stencil will come off. And that's a big part when you're tattooing um, on a person, is you, is you focus, you really want to keep that stencil as clean as you can. The more it starts to come off, that's when things start to get a bit more rushed or messy. So that's why I'm starting a lot more down here and I'm leaning nowhere near the snake. A lot of people ask me about getting detail in the piece and I definitely would recommend using a round shader at least to begin with before you go in with a mag and that way you can get all these details and I mean I see a lot of people not using a round shader as part of the needle set and I really do think this helps for details and it gives a lot different effect to using a mag you can get right up into the corners. You do have to be careful with them because they are a lot more like aligners and it's so easily to overwork the skin using these. Um, I know when I very first started I'd use them in parts where I almost couldn't go wrong and the more and more I get used to them the more you can start playing with really working the skin and getting as much detail in a piece as you can. That's why this motion that I'm doing now is so important when using them especially. You don't want to be sinking them in the skin um, because that's when things will start overworking. Another thing I would say is when you're using these, this is probably the biggest section that I'll be colouring in with the round shader. Um, and that is just from practice. Anything bigger than this, I probably would be using a mag to colour in with the black. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with colouring in bigger things. I just find it easier not to overwork the skin um, on anything as big or bigger. Some of these have a bit of a blur, so they're not like a solid section. They they have a bit of a fade, and I'm, what I'm doing is I'm just slowly flicking it out of the lines, either 
either direction and that way it gives it you know more of a blurry effect and a fade out and because I haven't put the lines in so solidly these will flick over the lines so easy that's part of the reason why I'm not lining it all in so solidly because I, I do like room to adjust as I'm going the lines that we've put in obviously real pictures that don't have lines so I try and just line in where the black's going and that way when you start colouring and shading it in the lines do disappear and that's what should happen as you're shading you should be slowly making them lines disappear So now that I'm at the eye, I'm literally just flicking in the corners and getting the details in. I won't be colouring the whole eye with the round shader. So I'm still using the black, but I am really skimming it here and fading it out. And almost doing a little bit of shading um, just to blend it out as I'm going. I wouldn't necessarily start using a grey to do this um, because I can just flick it out or go a lot lighter on the touch with the black. So with the black you could skim it so much that you could you could basically do a light grey with the black um, and then same with any of the other shades I could I could go a lot harder with a medium you know to create almost like a dark rather than a medium by just pushing it on the skin So what I'm aiming for now with the round shader is to get it to the point where we have a permanent stencil, all the black bits put in nicely and it should look a little bit more illustrated and then that way when I come to add the greys it'll be fun rather than stressful. I should be just hitting these sections with the greys, putting detail in but the picture from just the black and the tempt lines it should already create and start looking like the picture. For me it's just getting a routine down that I do every piece and then it makes it simple rather than I used to start at the bottom and just work my way across the picture but then I found the greys were hold or like healing differently um, whereas now I have like more of a routine with the piece. I'll temp the lines in I'll put the black sections in with the round and then I'll move on to the mag and, and I have this routine and that way even on the skin it heals better, it looks better, the shades are really consistent.
Right, so we're at a good point with all of the round shader parts. I've got as far as I want to be at the moment. So I'm back onto the liner and I'm going to get some of these little parts on the top of the head uh, skimmed in and then start working on some of the shades. So with these parts here, um, I'm just going to get all the edges marked in and then maybe some parts with a really light flick to just give some grey markings there and then I can start really concentrating getting the detail so with the liner here I'm just skimming it really really light so I'm not putting it in fully black and then I can go over with the round shader and just really refine, blur some parts if I want them to be. And any parts that I can see that I want filled black, I'll fill them as I go. Now it's really hard to see the parts that you have just skimmed, it all will look quite black but you've got to just trust that you've put it there and not get so carried away with wiping it um, that parts will come off. So these bits here that I skimmed in a while ago, you can see them now just really really subtly there and that's exactly what we're going for. But over here where it's not come off yet it still looks really dark but I'm not going to like wipe it all just yet I'm gonna just focus on getting the whole thing mapped in now it is hard because it is like a really complicated thing to look at when you're doing it from here and looking at that but you've just got to look at each section and move on to the next and gradually just slowly make your way across And now we start some greys. So we've dipped in 
light and medium between them two and I'm just going to slowly start building up on some of these areas here that I've marked in with the liner. So we haven't got the needle too far out here, just a tiny bit. And I'm just cross hatching it and slowly building up shades. Now I do like to get a few done at a time rather than just one. So I'll work on a few areas at a time, wipe it and then go back over the same areas. I just find that tends to be a lot faster. If you don't feel like the shade's going in how you feel or it's a bit smooth, you know, just keep adjusting the fro until you feel like that's the look that you're going for. I started out with it a little bit too um, in and it was a little bit smooth so I've just adjusted the fro and have the needle out a little bit more just then I can put the shades in a lot easier. I feel like the more it's out the faster it goes in. It's not as smooth but with some parts it almost felt like it was a bit too smooth, a bit blurry looking. There's no rush whatsoever with this. You just keep building it up and building it up until you're happy. So a lot of these now won't have much of an edge and they will just be a grey smear. Um, but then when I come back in, so my plan is to do with the round shade, to get all the shapes in and then I can go in with the liner and just get some darker parts and really refine the edges on it.
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark some of these bigger sections of the pattern uh, with the round shader, not a mag, and I'm just skimming over the top to leave a big grey patch. And that is got a few different shades in, but me getting this shape um, almost tempted in, I, I can then really clearly see where to go at. Um, so I'll get a few of these uh, mapped in and then I can put some detail in. So over here I'm mapping the big area in I'll give it a little dab and then I'm going in and doing the pattern so this is with a dark, not a black. So I'm mapping in where the pattern is. Give it a little wipe, see if it's dark enough. Not quite. And we go again. And then give it a little dab and we're shading right over the top that way we've got the pattern but it's almost sat inside the shade and we don't want to do a full shade over it first then add the pattern because as it heals it'll just disappear <clears throat> into the shade we want the pattern to be there first and then shade over the top Now as I'm <clears throat> going with um, this kind of bit, wherever I can see a similar part, um, I will do that at the same time. So here is exactly the same. Right, and now we're going to move on to putting some uh, bigger parts in. I want to get the eye in next. Um, probably use a 9 mag for this. So, for the solid black area, we're going to have the needle out just if you can see there just at a kind of medium um, depth just right for slowly circling putting the black in nice and solid Now between the two needles, it is just preference. I'm using the nine at the moment, just because I feel like on the fake skin, it goes in super easy. Now depending on the real person whereabouts it was on the body, I'd maybe use uh, the 15, just because it'd be a lot easier. But on the fake skin, it literally goes in like a marker pen. So it makes it a lot easier. 
so little small circles get a nice coverage now if I was tattooing this on a person I'd be doing a little circle like this I'd be dabbing it so it's not bleeding and as fast as I can then going in so you're not almost mixing the blood you're wiping that away you're getting it nice and fresh and you're just putting the black in and then uh, it's not getting watered down if that makes sense but on here we don't have any of that so it seems really chilled colouring in the black don't worry about getting right up to the edges obviously I'm trying hard here to get up to the edges but um, we can always go back with like a 14 or the liner and just get it right up to the edge now we can start um, Going in with a few shades, currently dipping in the dark here, but like I said before, I can use this even to get a light. So I'm literally just scraping the surface and cross hatching away, and this is going to build up from a light and blend it out to how I want it. I'm just looking back and forward at the picture and just building the shades up to how I want them to be. It does take a few times going over. I do see a lot of people, um, you're either, you either colour in the shades or you cross hatch and skim them in. Now I've found the cross hatching it seems to work better for me. Um, I can I can build the shades up a lot slower, um, and for me it doesn't seem to damage the skin um, nowhere near as much as if I was rubbing it in. And this using this technique, it doesn't seem to go as red either. Um, how it is now, obviously the fake skin doesn't go red, but this is kind of how it works on real skin as well.
So it's now coming to the point where things are building up and the picture's starting to be a lot more clear. Um, and that's kind of how I envision it as I go along. I really try and uh, build it up layer by layer. So that's even just starting off with the light picture. At about now I'd maybe move on to looking at the medium picture and bits like here where it's it's in but it's not dark enough yet and that's how I kind of want to get the whole thing and the blacks are in they're the first layer and then building it up to the point where you can see all the different shades but as I move along throughout the picture I like to almost temp everything in as I go but that being the first coat so now I'm looking at it and I'm happy with how it's going and I can see um, the bits that I need to do but I want to get a little bit of background in there so I can I can see where the whites are make it a bit more contrast so that way when I'm adding these shades it'll just look a lot better and I can kind of pick how dark to go with parts so what I'm going to do for this background is I'm going to have the needle so far in to start with because I want it really smooth and blurry so we're still on the same volts I've got it set at 11.30 on the volts um, that never changes with my tattooing it's either that 11.5 depending on the skin in real life would depend on the volts if it's going in if it's not but um, if I do feel like I want it to be even softer I might lower the volts slightly but I kind of just bring the needle back and uh, just cross hatch and get it nice and smooth. So I'm going to start off with the light. And that will just, just give me like a bit of a practice run almost. But because the shades are mixed with black, um, you kind of, it, it gives you a bit more chance to work it. And like you see now, it's just a, a load of scattered dots. Now they are black, but they're just watered down. So I dab it, and it's nice and smooth. Now the wiping doesn't help on this um, fake skin, because it makes it look a little bit streaky. But like I said before, you've just got to trust um, that you're doing the actions you're doing. Now there's no particular way that, um, that you do is going to be right. I think for me this is, I find this the best way for me, but you might want to do things in a slightly different order, um, especially when it comes to the background. I mean when you think of something like that you'd normally think you'd do that at the end, but I like to get at least a little bit in and then I can start seeing the picture a lot more clear. Especially with the background, it's one of those you'd rather it a bit too light than too dark um, on something like this. So working with just the light, it allows me to get it nice and smooth. Whereas if I went in, you know, with a darker shade that I actually want it to be, to become, um, it could it could end up quite scratchy. So this is a lot more safer option to build it up. That's kind of the process how I, how I would go on tattooing someone in person as well. I mean I'd rather um, go for a second pass or darken something up than it be too dark or scratchy.
Now as you can see already it's starting to bring out the face a lot more and the parts that are white on the snake are starting to look white. Now you don't want to go over this shade too much um, because the parts that you want dark you're going to want to go in with the dark. It's more getting like a first coat down and um, then you can go in with your medium, with your dark and get it how you want. With a lot of pictures where it's light on the picture I like to go dark behind to really bring it out and where it's dark I would like to go a lot more light. Now with the picture, it is just your reference. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the time, what will work on a picture or what will look good, it might not necessarily make a good tattoo. So that's why I like to adjust things and make it work good as a tattoo. I do find that on the fake skin, the uh, the mags are very laggy, almost like sticky on the fake skin. It's quite hard to get a nice clean swoop on the shade, but on actual skin it seems to glide really nice. So normally I would kind of push the shade, whereas on the fake skin it seems a lot easier to pull, doing like a backwards motion. Right, <clears throat> now we have all of the main part of the snake mapped in, we're going to move on to the more blurry parts, which is more up here. So our main focus is where the details are, have kind of been done, they've got the details in, and now as we come up into here, this will be where I start to more be looser with the shades and try and have that fade out. Um, and then once we get that part in, uh, we can then start really going into the more detailed and refining parts but I want to get this section here on and then it's in and then I can go from there so what I'm going to do first is I've mapped all of these uh, textures in and now I can shade over the top and really start getting some depth So I'm just loosely flicking with the mag, 9 mag we've got out now, and I'm just shading right over the top 
of the scales that we've already put in. I'm using a mix of between the black and the really dark grey. And just little circle flicks, just trying to get it really blurry. I'm not worrying about it getting up to an edge or anything like that. The further we go on throughout the snake, I want it to be more and more blurry the further it gets away, just to create that illusion that this bit is so detailed. So as you can see, now I'm looking at the coloured picture, which I've got so close. And that's just so I can really see um, the patterns a lot more clearer than I could just of the straight black and white picture. Now it may seem a bit pointless completely colouring over the details that you've put in there already um, but as the tattoo heals and it settles into the skin you'll always see that first layer um, so them little details will be there underneath the black and you'll always see them. So that's, it's very important to lighten up the picture and get them little details in. Um, they're so subtle but they make such a big difference on the finished piece because you can ever so slightly see them through. As you can see, it's looking quite blurry, um, which is what we're aiming for. And as I get to the edges here, I'm going quite hard. And then as I get to the edge, just really, really to nothing. And then in, and then to nothing. And just flicking it out in all different directions. And that's what's giving me the really blurry look. You have to really think about what the needles are doing in the skin and up close and kind of translate that into your hand movements.
Right, as you can see, it's starting to take a little bit more shape now. And what I'm doing is I'm going in with the medium greys and I'm now starting to blend parts. Um, and this is the part where I can really have some fun with it. Start putting in some um, deeper greys. And then once I've, I'm kind of mixing it up between using a mag and then using a round shader to add subtle details but just not as sharp as our focal points that are over here. So in here we still have some textures but they are more subtle. Now this is the fun part, because we've got all the textures in already, I can go over with um, the shades to kind of deepen them. Layers and layers and layers. You can see on this part here where I've got the shades and the textures underneath. So when I add this last layer that goes over the top, it really gives it that saturation but you can just see the details poking out from behind. And then as I come to the details that are in over here, I'm kind of doing it the opposite way around so I'll put the details in after I put the shades and that way it'll just soften in and kind of blur and be more in the background so I'm kind of at the moment I'm using the needle <coughs> in all the places that I see this for. So this I'm kind of blending, I'm doing bits of shades here and there. So I'm kind of dotting about in the places that I'll use this needle for.
Now I'm being really, really loose with the shades here because <clears throat> the further that I get up with it, I want it really, really blurry. So that means, you know, less control, just really whipping it out and getting a bit of style in it.
Okay, so now we're at the next stage of the process. We have everything on now, um, mapped in or faded out. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the final layers. So how that we've got some parts mapped in, some parts left on the body, I'm going to now start going in with like a round shader and a mag and just really blurring things out, getting that final layer, some blends in, little part on the head here, and then any details that we can see um, on the head of the snake. There's still some shades to go in here, um, but I've kind of left that to be mainly on the 14 round shader. So parts in here, like where we've mapped it in with the liner, um, I haven't come back to that until right now, so I'm kind of just building it up in stages so I can't kind of go wrong from now, everything's on, I'm not going to be rubbing off the stencil or parts like that, I can really just have fun with it. Um, I find if you try and do that too early on in the process, parts of the stencil will come off um, it ends up going really dark in one place and then it's a lot of pressure on the skin whereas at the moment um, if this was on a real person you can kind of judge it by how contrast it is and how it looks on that person and you can build it up from there so yeah let's get going I'm going to now swap to the round shader Now I haven't got the round shader, the needle, I haven't got that sticking out nowhere near as much as how I would be on the rest of it. I'm almost having it really far in so I can keep it quite blurry. Um, and this is just giving it like the final layer and making it really saturated. Now as you can see already, this is the kind of look that we're going for, rather than the more tempting part here. And I'm just using like a medium here, of the grey wash. And I can kind of go from there, even into the parts of the body quite lightly, and blending it over. So what I'm doing, I keep flicking, looking at the picture, seeing how it is. Obviously this part here is a lot lighter than the part over here. Um, and that's the kind of effect that I want to be getting on the body. The parts where it dips in, turns, parts like here where it's darker, and then it goes into a bit lighter. Now that's just building it up over the top of the lines that you've already put in and not doing it the other way around. The main thing for me is getting things done in the correct order um, and that way it heals nicer, it's a lot easier to do. So as I'm looking at this I'm kind of seeing what needles I'm using, trying to get the correct order down and getting that plan together in my head before I even start. Now even though at the moment it looks like I'm just shading right over the top. I'm kind of thinking about each individual scale and going a lot deeper and out and deeper. So it's giving me that effect. Now obviously the more blurry that I want it, the more I'm pulling the needle in 
and the more I'm using a more lighter shade. So the parts where I really want to build it up like now and just have it quite subtle um, I'm just pulling the needle way back in. Now I don't want to go too light with the shade um, because then I'll have to build it up more and more and more and it, on, real, on a real person it would be quite, it'd go red. So I'm not going to go on the lightest shade here, I'm more in between the light and the medium until I find the balance of that's the correct shade. Okay, so we've got all the details that we want in, all the little bits and final touches. Um, so now we're onto the white highlights. Now I'm mainly going to concentrate on the two forward areas, uh, which is here and here, and kind of keep the blurriness with just a few white highlights in, uh, where I want almost like the shines on here but I'm going to mainly concentrate on these parts um, and that will bring it forward and your eye will more focus to the two parts that are really forward and bring it into the foreground. Now I'm just using a five round line here and that's 
normally the needle that I'll go for when I'm using white. Um, sometimes I'll I'll maybe use like a round shader if I want it really blurry, which I might end up doing up here. Um, but I don't like to get too carried away with the white. Um, it is just highlights, and on a lot of people on real skin, you can't. It, it cannot be there when it heals, or it can go quite browny. So I only put it on the parts to kind of separate the ink. Now what you'll see me do here is, even though a lot of these places have left the gaps for the white, in the areas like here, where it is a shade um, leaving, so it's like a snake, the crease of it, I'm also going to put white in here and that will just give that crease a lot more definition. So I'm not going to go really heavy here, I'm almost going to shade the white in. Um, but it'll just give it that subtle uh, tone that we're looking for. Now you can see it and it just turns from uh, being a shade to almost like a really prominent grey and it just separates the black. <laughs> 